It's penetrating every aspect of our lives, be it commercial, be it educational, be it entertainment. And if you go further now, you begin to see that the internet, in my mind, has only reached its teenage years. And that gives you a kind of condition to see why it's behaving the way it does, because it's behaving very badly. Okay? It's mischievous, it's erratic, it's unruly, and it's disobedient. Now, hopefully it'll grow up, it'll get past this stage, but it's not unusual to see this kind of behavior as the technology begins to feel its strength, mature, find its way in life, and set its principles. So I'm optimistic about that. So let's look at this brief history. I'm going to read to you a prediction and wonder if anybody in the room knows who made this prediction. I'll read it to you. It will be possible for a businessman in New York to dictate instructions and have them instantly appear in type at his office in London or elsewhere. He'll be able to call up from his desk and talk to any telephone subscriber on the globe. An inexpensive instrument, no bigger than a watch, will enable its bearer to hear anywhere, on sea or land, music or song, the speech of a political leader, the address of an eminent man of science, or the sermon of an eloquent clergyman. Delivered in some other place, however distant, in the same manner any picture, character, drawing, or print can be transferred from one to the other place. Who said that? No, it wasn't, wasn't Bush. <laughs> that man. Nikola Tesla, a giant of his years, and it's more than 100 years ago. This man was talking about the internet, if you parse it correctly. He didn't mention video because there was no video. The vision was there. These things were in the air for a century. We had to wait for the technology to reach the right point before we could implement it. So there's relatively nothing new under the sun, if you like to repeat that.